And joining me now for more is Phil Robertson from Human Rights Watch. Phil, calling the Rohingya repression genocide is really not new, is it? I mean, the UN Human Rights Commissioner called it acts of genocide back in 2018. How does Secretary Blinken's announcement change anything? Well, we hope that it will now motivate other governments around the world to also look at this, to really investigate it, and also to support the Gambia at the International Court of Justice. Uh, but you're right, it doesn't do much beyond, uh, you know, add to the list of atrocities that the Myanmar military has committed. And, you know, that's why we've been saying, OK, excellent move, but now we need to see real action. Now we need to see something happening at the UN Security Council that actually impacts the situation on the ground, uh, you what? know, that goes beyond just calls for accountability, but actually changes uh, the dynamic, keeping weapons away from the military, uh, imposing an arms embargo, uh, referring the military to the International Criminal Court. These are all things that are at the top of our list. Uh, do you think that the lack of action against the Myanmar junta thus far, when it comes to the repression of the Rohingya, has emboldened the army to crack down on democracy in the country? There's no doubt that the, the Myanmar military uh, committed these atrocities against the Rohingya and then looked around and realized they had gotten away with it and feel, felt that they could do more. Uh, this is, again, uh, you know, the, the, the failure of the international community to impose accountability for atrocities that have happened in Myanmar over the years is that, you know, the takeaway by the Myanmar military is we've done it before, we can do it again, and no one can stop us. And and the reality is that this now with the uh, Rohingya genocide uh, really is the worst case scenario that you could imagine in terms of uh, what the military could do against the people of Myanmar. And it's, it's astonishing that it really had to come to this point to actually get the international community to wake up and realize what has been happening. Uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, the coup in Myanmar and how the junta has cracked down against uh, democracy in the country. And I'd just like to update our viewers first that opposition groups in the country now are expressing outrage at a meeting between a Southeast Asian peace envoy and leaders of Myanmar's military government. ASEAN envoy Prak Sokhon, who's also Cambodia's foreign minister, traveled to Myanmar to meet with junta leader Min Ong Liang and other Myanmar officials. A coalition of civil society groups in Myanmar has called the meeting shameful. Now, Myanmar has been in turmoil for over a year now. The military's takeover of power in February 2021 sparked nationwide strikes and protests, which have been put down by force. Phil, just speaking about that crackdown, is the Cambodian foreign minister's visit to Myanmar helping resolve the crisis? It's really not. I mean, he's there ostensibly to pursue uh, the implementation of the so-called five-point consensus uh, reached at ASEAN, but he's already violating core premises of that, that, you know, any conversation should involve all stakeholders. Uh, so far, the only people he has met has been uh, military junta leaders. Um, unfortunately, we don't expect to see much from this visit. Uh, there may be some donations, some uh, humanitarian aid provided. But, you know, the reality is that the uh, ASEAN is split right down the middle on these issues of, of Myanmar. Uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, the other governments of ASEAN, particularly Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore, who are not happy with how the Cambodians are handling this. And I expect that the, the demands by Myanmar that they be in charge of any sort of uh, forward movement uh, on this uh, will ultimately stymie any progress because so far the military doesn't want to do a deal. It doesn't want to step back. It's, it's busy trying to crush an uprising against it. Which begs the question, therefore, Phil, can ASEAN truly help with the restoration of democracy in Myanmar? I have my serious doubts that ASEAN is the solution here. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we're seeing the European Union and the Americans and others all continue to talk about ASEAN centrality as if ASEAN as the regional organization is going to fix Myanmar. It appears that that is just a way for those big countries to duck uh, greater responsibility on Myanmar uh, while they pay attention to other crises, things like uh, the situation in Ukraine. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it's been uh, pushed over to the, to the local uh, association of Southeast Asian states and uh, this is probably the one organization that is least capable 
of actually finding a solution uh, with the necessary political commitment and protection of rights and democracy that Myanmar needs. Phil, we'll leave it there for the time being, but thank you so much for joining us today. Phil Robertson from Human Rights Watch.